Hey everybody, welcome to Digging Deeper. This is Pastor Chelsea here with Pastor Kenneth, and we're so excited to dive a little deeper into our message from this last Sunday that Pastor Kenneth shared with us. So I know the big question on everybody's mind after Sunday. Okay. Um, it was the you know, powerful word of God. Yep. Lots of just impactful illustrations and helpful teachings. Thank, thank you. But why on earth would you ever think it was okay to prank your wife with a spider? <laughs> the only thing I can say was a momentary lapse into insanity. Sure, sure. I mean, I have no idea. Looking back, I'm not sure it was me. It was just oh, like you were, some guy that looked <laughs> like Ken. Yeah, yeah, sure. And so, yeah, I, I thought it'd be funny, and uh, I honestly thought that she would yell and be like, ah, and then we mm -hmm. kind of laugh about it together afterwards, but um, she didn't, and mm -hmm. in fact, I didn't share this on Sunday, she, she cried. Oh, she started crying, and I knew right then I was in so much trouble. Yeah, not good. And so never again. No, now you know, yeah. now you know. Live well, and learn, right? There you go. Okay, well, on a little more serious of a note, your main point on Sunday was that the God within you is bigger than the storm around you. Yep. And you shared the story of Jesus and Peter when they walked on the water. Yep. So you, you know, obviously we were kind of in a transition again as Pastor Jim has been uh, dealing with COVID and you had the opportunity to kind of speak on whatever you felt led to speak on. Yep. Why choose this text? Yeah, um, so I think... I think the Word of God speaks to us right where we're at. Mm -hmm. where we're at. And I think this text, this story in particular, dealing with a storm and um, a hardship, speaks to where people are at right now with uh, a change in the new year, um, some of the spiking COVID cases mm -hmm. we've seen, not only in our state, but in our own church as well. Right, a lot of people right. who are sick. And so I'm sure you've experienced this, but I've had a ton of questions come yes. my way. Mm -hmm. uh, people phoning me up or texting saying, uh, what are we doing here? What's going mm -hmm. on here? What's the next step? Um, and so I think in the middle of this storm that we're going through as a family, it was important to remind ourselves um, we need to focus in, on Jesus mm -hmm. on this time. We want to be sure. prudent. We want to be safe. We want to do all these things, but focus in on Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe even more than the focusing on Jesus, which is essential, sometimes when we go through a storm, uh, we like to sit on the couch and do nothing. Mm -hmm. Like we want to feel sorry for ourselves mm -hmm. a little bit or like we, maybe that's the wrong way of putting it. We, we're so consumed with what we are going through that we miss what other right. people are going through as well. Right. And so it's helpful, I think, when you go through something, maybe to take a, a step back from your own pain sure. and speak into this other people's pain and what yeah. they're going through. Right. Um, and so, for example... I remember when I had COVID back in July. <laughs> Wait, right? that was so long yeah, ago. Yeah, like 10 years ago. Yeah, now, right. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, someone who was um, going through chemotherapy mm -hmm. texted me and said, hey, how are you doing? Mm. I'm like, I have COVID, but you mm -hmm. have cancer. These right. are two drastically different things. Mm -hmm. But it was her way of kind of stepping out of her storm right. and speaking into mine. And it was a massive blessing to me. Mm -hmm. So That's a great example. Well, and I think that this is just such a unique storm for many of us because we're not used to them lasting this long. Yeah, right? that's true. You know, yeah. so many of the storms, literal and figurative storms of our life, they're over in a few days. But this yeah. one just continues to go on and the storm surges and we just have to keep pushing forward. So any reminder we can have about keeping our eyes on Jesus and the, the power of faith in our lives is key right now. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. So one thing that uh, obvious is very obvious, obviously, when you hear this story, is Peter stepping out of that boat is just such a big risk. Yeah. And why do you think it is that for many of us, we're so timid about taking those God-honoring kinds of risks? Yeah, so it was a big risk for Peter. And in fact, it may have even been, we don't know, it may have been a, uh, a life or death risk. Mm -hmm. He's stepping out of a boat into a storm in right. the middle of the night. Yeah. And so we don't know how bad it was, but it could have been life-threatening sure. if he 
would have sang, well, right? And when we, when, when I know there's people watching who probably have grown up reading that in a little picture book, and it probably is not yeah. giving us the full yeah, capacity the of the The sun is shining in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so the lightning bolt smiling, yeah. yeah. Probably not how it happened. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, so it was risky, and I think... Um, what was the question again? It was, so why why do you think we're so timid? Oh, yeah, to take yeah those sorry, yeah. Risks? That's right. okay. Uh, I think uh, there's a number of reasons. Um, one is we get so focused on our own stuff, right? Sure. I mean, when, like, if, if I hit my thumb with a hammer, I'm going to ignore everything else going on in my body. I could be hungry, I could be tired, or whatever. I'm going to focus mm -hmm. on that painful thumb. Mm -hmm. And so we focus on the things that we're going through sometimes to the exclusion of other things. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Uh, I think fear comes into play at this point. We, um, w we want guarantees. Yeah. If I'm going to take this step of faith, I want to guarantee that it's going to work out in my favor. S oftentimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes there is no guarantee. That's why we call it a step of faith. Sure. Um, I think we have grown up in a church setting. I came to the church as a teenager, mm -hmm. so I think I saw this a little bit easier than people who grew up in the faith. Now, we, we kind of have a comfortable faith, mm -hmm. right? Our chairs are padded, we have AC, mm -hmm. and we, you know, things are pretty comfortable. Sure. We're not being persecuted for our faith like other parts of the mm -hmm. world. Um, and so when it comes to doing something that's uncomfortable and taking a risk, um, it's harder for us, mm -hmm. right? Um, we, I mean, we have sometimes in the past, the AC hasn't worked. Mm -hmm. Right. And you would have thought right. it would have been the, but the end of the world. Or the or, coffee ran out. Or, yeah, yeah. All, all these things that are <laughs> yeah. good things, right? right? And, sure. you know, it makes a difference. Uh, but I have to remind myself, and we have to mm -hmm. remind ourselves, that there are people in other parts of the world where AC doesn't even mm -hmm. exist, right? Mm -hmm. And they're still, persecution is a big reality, mm -hmm. but they still... You know, they step out in faith, right. they go to church, they take their risks, they share their faith. Um, and I think the key is, while there may be risk involved, you take the risk that God wants you to take. Sure. Whether that's forgiving someone, giving a, a gift, whether that's taking food to someone, whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. So. Sure, well, that's helpful. So you had several points that you made to kind of back up this big picture idea. And one of them was to give Jesus your focus. And you talked about how that's not a one-time decision that's made, but that's an ongoing keep decision. Yeah. Keep, keep looking into Jesus. What are those things that make it easy for us to take our eyes off Jesus, and why do we do it? Oh. So um, the obvious answer is sin, mm -hmm. right? Sin will cause us to take sure. our eyes off Jesus. Yeah. I think another answer would be some... So that's the bad things, right? but also the good things, right? Sure. And so God put something in our lives or we develop a, um, a hobby and uh, at first it's a good thing. Sure. It helps us unwind or it gives us creative outlets but eventually it becomes the thing, mm -hmm. right? And so a sports league becomes the thing and so parents may not take their kids to church mm -hmm. or things like that. Um, I may develop a, a, a hobby where now instead of uh, reading the scriptures, I'm binge watching something on mm -hmm. Netflix, right? And so something that could be good mm -hmm. takes the place of, uh, becomes priority in our lives over, over the things of God. Mm -hmm. I think that happens more often than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, it becomes an idol. Right. 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 And so uh, someone goes to church for uh, years and years mm -hmm. and their faith, or they're reading the Bible, their faith is flourishing, and then they meet the wrong person. They mm -hmm. start dating that person. Yeah. And then before you know it, uh, they're taking steps backwards, yes. right? And they're fading from their faith. Right. Um, so that relationship is a, was a good thing, mm -hmm. but it became the main thing, which yes. then became a bad thing. Sure, so. sure. That makes good sense. Why, I mean, I know it's one of those questions that we can't really ever answer this side of heaven, but why do you think it is we, we continue to fall into those patterns of behavior? It's a great question. Um, let me think. Yeah. I think part of it is we um, are comfortable with what we do. We know what we know. And so if we're used to mm -hmm. bad relationships, as funny as it sounds, we sometimes keep going back to bad mm -hmm. relationships. Or if we're used to making bi bad financial decisions, uh, we're used to it and we, that's what we know and so that's what we do. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's part of it. I think uh, we have a hearing problem, Yeah. right? And so God may be saying, 
no, 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 I w don't do yeah. this, and we're hard of hearing. Mm -hmm. Maybe because of sin, maybe because we're not putting ourselves in places where we can hear from God. Right. Right? We're not reading the Bible, we're not praying, mm -hmm. we're not worshiping, we're not serving other people. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, we, we don't have a good grasp on what God's voice sounds like. Right. And so when he's saying, hey, Chelsea, don't do that, mm -hmm. we, we miss it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's easy, I mean, there's a lot of reasons. It's easy to sure. get into the flow of what culture is doing. Right. right? I had a conversation just this week with a, a, a young person who made some poor decisions mm -hmm. sexually. Okay. Right? And when I asked this person about it, um, about your faith, mm -hmm. do you believe in God? And your faith puts you apart from how you're right. acting. And they said, well, everyone else is doing it. Right, right. right. And so this person got caught in the flow of what all of friends mm -hmm. are doing and everyone around them is doing. Mm -hmm. And so it's easy to get caught up in that. Yeah. It's hard to swim against the tide sometimes. Yeah. Well, and if, you know, some of us hear that excuse of everyone else is doing it and we smirk, but the reality is that many of us would fall prey to the same yeah. thing. They have bad behavior, so I can have bad behavior, those kinds of things. And I yeah. think that that takes our focus off, off Christ immediately when yeah. we do those things. And it's hard to to say no to, to right. that, right? Especially right. if it's something that you kind of want. Right, you never right. want to be the odd, the odd right. duck, yeah. Yes. Well, and I think you hit that key point, too, about that failure to admit there's a problem to begin with, mm -hmm. or uh, refusal to recognize it. it. Reminds me of, sometimes you'll hear stories about folks who, who, as they age, will say like, I don't want bifocals. If I get bifocals, then I'm gonna be yeah. old. It'll make me old. And so then they're driving around and doing things yeah. and they can't see. You know, and they won't admit that there's the problem. And I think that so much of our focus problems come from things like that, like refusing to admit there's a problem to begin yeah, with. Yeah, that's a great example. Yeah, yeah. It can, you know, another example would be um, in our tradition, the holiness tradition. Sure. Um, there was a doctrine that went around for a long time of sinless perfection, right? Mm -hmm. And this idea that you can live life completely sinless. <laughs> um, we don't need to go into that, but a, a, a bad side effect mm -hmm. of that was people would sin but because they didn't want to lose their record that they mm -hmm. had, they wouldn't call it sin. Right. And so there was no confession, there's no mm -hmm. repentance, and it just breeds right. more and more sin. Right. And so, it's, yeah, they didn't acknowledge the problem, mm -hmm. and the problem got bigger. Exactly. Exactly. So switching gears a little bit, and I want to read this off of our note sheet because I want to make sure I get the quotation right. But uh, John Ortberg, who's a, pa a pastor, a fairly well-known pastor and author, says, the worst failure is not to sink in the waves. The worst failure is to never get out of the boat. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, so I think Peter tried, mm -hmm. right? And the other 11 just stayed in the boat and they didn't try. And mm -hmm. I think our faith a lot, oftentimes comes down to just doing what Jesus says and taking those risks. And uh, they... Their failure was not getting out of boat and not trying. Mm -hmm. Peter may have sank a little bit, but he got to experience something that no one else did. Mm -hmm. He walked on water, and he got to experience that rescue, right? He yes. cried out, Lord, save me, and he experienced that. Mm -hmm. um, and so to bring it down maybe to our level, because no one's walked on water <laughs> here. <laughs> right. right? Uh, well, maybe you have, mm. but um, <laughs> it's God... Right, so maybe God wants you to forgive somebody. Sure. And you don't want to do it because they hurt you. But if you follow the scriptures and you listen to the voice of God, you realize that the forgiveness that you're offering is ultimately for you. Mm -hmm. It's to release you from a cage. It's to allow you to walk in freedom. Mm -hmm. And when you hold on to that, bitterness can grow and you start putting yourself in chains. And um, that becomes a failure in itself, right? Not only not listening to what Jesus said, you're putting yourself in prison. Yeah. Um, and so it, that's uh, the dangerous side of not taking yeah. those risks. I appreciated that clarification or distinction on Sunday, I suppose, of that there were 11 other people in that boat, as far as we know, that didn't do anything. You right. know, they stayed seated. I think that's important. But it is also important to recognize that Peter is not ultimately successful yeah. in his walk. He sinks. Yeah. Why does he sink? He sank. Well, the scriptures tell us two yeah. things. He took his eyes off Jesus, right. and he was afraid. Mm -hmm. And so he took his eyes off the one who enabled him to walk, mm -hmm. and he looked at his circumstances, his surrounding, and he said, oh my, oh dear, mm -hmm. I'm in a lot of trouble. And then the fear came in, mm -hmm. right? And so those are the two reasons. He took his eyes off Jesus, and he was afraid, right? And yeah. so fear began to speak for him at that point. 
And isn't that, I think that's so telling of the circumstances we're in right now. The only way we're going to make it through this is keeping our focus and our eyes on Jesus. Yeah. Because when we start to turn and look at any of the, the statistics and the information and the barrage of media and news, we're going to get scared pretty quickly. Right. So I think that's, I mean, what a telling parallel for where we're at now. Yeah, and this is the time that we're in, it's, at first especially, things change so quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were, as staff, we were making plans oh, left word. and right yeah. and then changing them mm -hmm. left and right because of, mm -hmm. you know, policies that we had to follow and all right. these things right now. And uh, even, you know, dealing with, you know, when you should get tested if you have it or oh, you, if you yeah. think you have it or when you can go back to work or how long you have to be symptom-free. It, it's, it's changed from mm -hmm. when I've had it. Mm -hmm. even. Um, and so that, does, that can breed a, le a level of uncertainty and, mm -hmm. and fear. Um, I know um, some of our friends in the faith uh, talk about fear a little differently, but you can have faith and be prudent, right? And yeah. you can have faith yep. and do what's right and be right. safe and all these things. I think it's, that's right. called wisdom. Right. Um, but when fear... When you, you know you have a problem with fear, with a couple of things, when you, it's hard for you to take the steps that Jesus wants you mm -hmm. to take. Like he wants mm -hmm. you to go left, and you <laughs> want to go right, yeah. and you're afraid to go mm -hmm. left. And when it causes you to take your eyes off Jesus, yeah. right? And so you're going through life, you, you pray each day, you read your Bible, you serve, you go to church, you do all these things, and then one of those gets pulled away. Mm -hmm. And then fear replaces mm -hmm. it, right? Sure. And so that's where the the danger comes and when fear speaks for you. Yeah, I think a really good exercise for us in this season is am I spending as much time uh, in relationship with God as I am in relationship with my phone and oh, my, yeah. my sources of information, other places I'm getting that because I think that's a good check and balance for us yeah. of, of, of it. And I'm not suggesting that if you're not spending eight hours a day in the Word that you're doing something wrong by any means. But what I am suggesting is you know, uh, I remember at one point during this talking with Jay and, and, and we're just saying, you know what, we need to maybe reduce how much we're reading the news because it's not changing every second. Right. It is changing rapidly, but it's not every second. And, and constantly refreshing is probably not an actually a helpful activity. So let's let's shift that, yeah. that focus. That's good. And I, I would add, if you're like part of the faith that we have, God's Holy Spirit lives within us. Mm -hmm. And so moment by moment, He wants to be included in what we're doing. So yes. as we're reading the, the, the news report, right. we can say, oh, Lord, um, would you help this yes, person? Or would absolutely. you help me? And um, giving Him space to, to move and do Making His work. Making it an active part of your faith. Exactly. Yeah. Right? And Super so when key. Paul talks about pray without ceasing, mm -hmm. that's what he's talking about. Absolutely. Right? It's not like you're on your knees like this right. every moment of the day. Right. It's, I'm going to go... Uh, you know, to my office mm -hmm. and and work, Lord. Yeah. Walk with me. Mm -hmm. uh, Keep my focus speak on to you. me. Yeah, exactly. All those things. Yeah. 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 Sure. So, um, faith can be described as simply trusting Jesus enough to take the next step. The next step, however big or small that might be. What could that step look like? Um, well, um, it could look like a million different things. It could look like um, Bringing some food to someone who's in quarantine. Yeah, yeah. Right? And you don't want to leave the house, mm -hmm. but they need some food. Yeah. So help them out. It could look like giving some money to someone in need. Um, if you're upset about something, me coming to you and just mm -hmm. listening through all those mm -hmm. things. Um, it sounds a lot like many of these things are the same as being the light that we talked about think? last time. How interesting. You mean it's all connected? Yeah, those tie-ins. I read a story uh, years ago uh, of a lady who swam the English Channel. Okay. It's the shortest po point in the English Channel. It was 22 miles, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And so her goal was to go from Calais to uh, uh, Dover in England. Oh, I think she started in England went to France. And she's swimming along, and as she's swimming, a fog rolls mm -hmm. in. And so she can't see anything, but fortunately she has her trainer with her in a boat, and he's encouraging her. And so the hours go on. She's been swimming for eight hours, nine hours, ten hours, you know. Twenty hours later, she's exhausted. Mm -hmm. She has no more energy. She's wanted to quit a number of times, and her trainer said, no, sure, keep going. And at the, at the 20 hour mark, she's, she couldn't even mm. float anymore. And so she was in danger of drowning, so they pulled her out of the boats. Uh, put her on the water and yeah. put her in the boat. 
You know how far she was from the shore? Half a mile. Ugh. Half a mile. So they went, the boat oh, started to go, yeah. and they broke through the fog, and they could see mm -hmm. the land. And she said these words afterwards. If I could have seen the land, mm -hmm. I could have made it. Mm -hmm. right? That's what the next step is. Yeah. There's a fog. Faith says, I can't see the land, but I'm going to take I'm that step. I'm still going to go. Yeah. Sure. That's what the next Very step is. Very helpful. Like. So when Jesus gets back in the boat after he's pulled Peter out of the water and, uh, uh, and Peter's, you know, I imagine dripping wet and drying off or whatever, the disciples choose then to worship Jesus. Yeah. And you talk about in your message how worship is not just the singing of songs yeah. or via music. We often associate it with that. Um, elaborate more then on, on what, what is worship then. Yeah. Um, we've limited it. In, to some degree, what would what would expanding it look like? Yeah, that's, a, that's good. Um, so worship is about the offering of my life to a holy God who is worthy of it. Mm -hmm. right? And so I acknowledge God for who He is, for what He's done. In fact, every reason that you have to worship God and I have to worship God falls under two main reasons. Mm -hmm. Who He is and what He has done. Mm -hmm. So uh, He saved me. Good. That's what He's done. He is good to me. That's who He is. Mm -hmm. You know, everything. And so... Uh, in the church, we've associated worship with um, with music, yeah. and then Pastor Jim's going to preach, or you're going to yeah. preach. So that's different from mm -hmm. the music side. Well, if there is no offering of your life in the music, right. then all you have is music. You don't mm -hmm. have worship. If there's no offering of saying, "Lord, here I am. All I have is yours. Speak to me. Work in me." You can sing all the songs you want, but it's not worship, mm -hmm. right? And so the difference is that offering. Uh, Romans 12 talks about um, you know, being renewed by your mind and giving your body as a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem with a living sacrifice is it always wants to crawl off the altar. Mm -hmm. right? Right. The, the act of worship is putting yourself back on the altar every moment of every, every day. That's what worship is. Mm -hmm. And so music can be a great avenue for worship if it includes that offering. Mm -hmm. Lord, here I am. Mm -hmm. I uh, speak to me. I worship right. you. If it doesn't have that, then it's just it's right. just music. Right, so. and it's not your job to. I think we put uh, the responsibility like you have to lead me to that. Put yeah. me in that place. You can you can be used by the Holy Spirit to guide and and yeah. lead, but you ultimately that's such an act in our own hearts. It has to. And, be. and yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't make you worship. You're right? not the one in my head making the grocery list, right? Like you, you know those things right. that we hear people say. Yeah. yeah. And I can do my part to try and make it compelling and mm -hmm. partner with the Holy Spirit to hopefully create something mm -hmm. that will spark something and so on to say, oh yeah, you know I uh, I was. Complaining to a, not complain, that's the wrong word. <laughs> Maybe I was complaining mm -hmm. to a, an, old, uh, an older worship pastor mm -hmm. friend of mine. And about, you know, sometimes the response isn't quite mm -hmm. what I would like it to be and all that. Um, and he said, well, you can't make, you can uh, lead a horse to water, but you can't make him yeah. drink, right? That right. old adage. Yeah. And I thought about that and I told him, but my job isn't to make him drink, it's to make them thirsty. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. To, present to them this feast that God wants to give mm -hmm. them. Whether they eat or not, or mm -hmm. drink or participate, mm -hmm. is on them. Perfect. That's yeah. the offering part of it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, did you have anything in the text? I know every time that we, we have the privilege to speak, there's always things we can't quite get to. Sure. Is there anything you would have liked to have addressed that you didn't you didn't get to in this? Yeah, so my this sermon originally had six points to it. <laughs> and yeah. I sliced a couple out and I yeah. made it four because nobody wants to hear a six point sermon. I do. Oh you do. I wanted okay. to hear all six of your points. We're gonna do it again. Then. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so the another point that I didn't get to was um, Jesus, this idea that Jesus can save you from many things, right? Mm -hmm. So we all know that Jesus saves from hell. Uh, but Peter in that moment needed saving from being drowned. Right, right? yeah. And so Jesus can save us from uh, all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Self-destructive behavior, mm -hmm. um, relationships that are toxic, mm -hmm. uh, from finances that are not going anywhere, mm -hmm. from um, you know, all these kind of things. Sure. Uh, if we limit it only to something that Jesus does for us on that side of death yeah. or you know on the other side of life mm -hmm. then we're missing out on a huge part of what christianity mm -hmm. is so jesus saves us from uh, you know, 
saves us so we can live a holy life, saves mm -hmm. us so we can be generous, saves us so we can uh, be the light, and all these yeah. things. And when we look back on when he saved us before, again, like we've talked about, you have that confidence to believe he'll do it again. Yeah, you know, absolutely. We track those things. That is actually why I think, I think you pointed this out in one of your messages once, that that's why God has us build, or throughout the scriptures, uh, memorials, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. um, because we have this tendency to forget. Mm -hmm. And so God is saying, no, no, I want you to build this memorial. And when your kids ask what that is, you tell them, mm -hmm. well, we built this because this is what God did. Yes. Right? Yes. And if God can do it then, mm -hmm. he can do it now. Yeah. And he can do it tomorrow. So, yeah, that's a great example. Um, and the second thing I would say is a little bit of faith is better than no faith. Mm -hmm. Right? Jesus talks about the faith the size of a mustard yep. seed yep. and all these things. Um, the G Peter had a little bit of faith. I would argue that the people in the boat had even less faith, mm -hmm. right? Um, at least he had the, the faith to step out. Yeah. Or the, maybe it wasn't faith, maybe it was stupidity. <laughs> the gusto, it, the yeah, gusto, something. Whatever it was. But he had it, right? And he, I, I, I think it was faith. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I hear people sometimes say, maybe you do as well, that um, I don't know if I can do that, mm -hmm. or God can use me in that mm -hmm. way, or uh, I, I'm not a strong enough person, I don't have the faith enough for that. Well, do you have a little bit? Mm -hmm. I right. mean, do you have just a little bit right. to, to take that step? If, yeah. you, if you have that mustard seed size of faith, I believe that God can do anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to have that wellness to, to take that yeah. step, though. So the other night, you and I were texting a little bit after your message, and uh, I mentioned to you how this last year's really been, I mean, we all know about your, your COVID, Thing. But you've got a, you've had a lot of other stuff going on in your life too, um, and don't worry, I'm not going to go divulge everything. If you want to, I can talk to him. But uh, you know, so just, have you. Yeah, you know, you've just had lots of lots of stuff, right? And so my, you know what it's like to go through a storm. You know what it's like to keep going through that storm. So my question for you is, knowing what you know, having gone through the storm of this past year and just life in general, sure, but mostly this last year. What would you then turn and say to somebody, I know friends are watching right now who are going through storms. What yeah. would you say? Yeah, that's a great question. I would, the first thing I'd say is God is good, mm -hmm. right? I mean, no matter, bad things have happened and all that, God is good. I remember, uh, you remember Mark Penny and mm -hmm. Mary? Yeah. Uh, his, Mary died tragically. Mm -hmm. I'm sure many of you remember them. Um, and Mark was in the hospital. I went down to visit him in Tyler, I think it was. Um, and we were talking for a little bit, and at the end of our conversation, he said, Kenneth, God is good. Mm. I remember thinking, how, like, your, how do you say that? Your, your yeah. wife just died. Your, your kids don't have a mom. You, you, you almost died. Mm -hmm. We had a service to pray for you, mm -hmm. and, and you're telling me that God is good. Mm. And he, he meant it, right? right? And so the first thing I would say is God is good. No matter what happens to us, God is good, mm -hmm. right? Always good. Uh, second thing I would say is keep your eye, put your eyes on Jesus and keep putting your eyes on Jesus. Um, if you do it one time, that's good. But if you pull your eyes away again, uh, th that's a problem. Just keep looking to Jesus. I know that uh, there are people who don't have jobs and there are people who are dealing with health issues. People are wondering about their neighbor and when they mm. can come out of the house and all these things. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Uh, Hebrews talks about it. Uh, Look into Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who yes. for the joy before him endured the cross and despised its shame and, and sitting down, sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. Mm -hmm. And so um, God can, if you keep your eyes on him, he can complete your faith mm -hmm. and he can walk with you every step of the way. He walks with you whether you know it or not, mm -hmm. but if you keep your eyes on him, you have that assurance of yeah. his presence even yeah. more. And so. beauty of insights you might not have had otherwise. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then lastly, I would say we need each other. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think everything that I went through personally, I, I understand other people have had way worse things. But the little things mm -hmm. that I've experienced that were big to me, yeah. every step of the way I had people walking with mm -hmm. me, right? right. Um, st staff and friends um, like you and uh, Andrew and Jim, um, that community was essential. Mm -hmm. It really was. Yeah, um, yeah. Because it's easy to get dark, you know, mm -hmm. think, oh, woe is me and mm -hmm. the world is ending mm -hmm. we need each other that way well and i would also just add there's no shame in your storm yeah. in sharing it you know i think one of the things that's been interesting throughout this pandemic is that people have been ashamed to say 
I've got COVID. Oh yeah. Because they are afraid of the ramifications that that will bring um, for mentioning it. But my my thought on it mm. is, no, we desperately need each other. We need to be praying for each other. We, you know, why? Uh, don't let that fear consume you. And as the body of Christ, it is not our place to judge, but our place to come alongside right. and love um, on those folks and walk with those folks through whatever that storm may be. Absolutely. And if, you know, I understand that you're not always ready to broadcast it to the world, and that's very understandable, yeah. but I, I know I can speak for the, the four of us pastors here. We want to talk to you. And we want to walk alongside you through what you're going through. Absolutely. Um, and, and know that you can you can access us in those ways. Yeah, and we can actually help remove the stigma of that by yeah. talking about it and then serving people with it, yes, right? And absolutely. helping, like you said. So yeah. I'm, yeah. Absolutely. Well, everybody, thanks so much for tuning in for this Digging Deeper video. Uh, so good to be able to spend time in conversation with you, Kenneth. Thank you for your wisdom and your words. Of and course. uh willingness to share your story, even the parts of your story that made all of us judge you, like, you know, putting a, <laughs> spider. a spider on the toilet paper roll. So, anywho, well, thanks for watching, guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bless you.